South, who's got the first coast-to-coast -coast morning show since Arthur Godfrey. Put away your ukuleles. Uh, you know what? It's happening very, very quickly now. We've just got uh, started in Dallas radio. We've been on in Cleveland, Los Angeles. We're going to be number one. It's very exciting. But Howard Stern has not gotten to the top of the entertainment C list without taking victims. Handicapped people, fat people, bald people, and people like John DeBella. For years, John DeBella has been Philadelphia's hard-working morning DJ. They call him the zookeeper, and his cry of Yazoo has been a morning institution here in the city of brotherly love. Uh, hang on, that's right, I'm a flea, I forgot. It's amazing how the smallest flea can bring down the biggest <laughs> Day after day, John DeBella did what he did best. He had a loyal following, an immense house, and a nice wife. Then one day he awoke to his own funeral. Yes, after four years of simulcasting his New York radio show in Philadelphia, Howard Stern cut John DeBella's radio ratings in half. Then he rubbed his nose in it. We knew once the number one situation was taken care of, yeah. once that happened, it was a countdown until his wife left him. Months later, John DeBella's wife did indeed leave him, and Howard Stern moved in for the kill. This is about, you know, me and my wife getting divorced, right? That's our choice. That's a personal thing, right? To celebrate that out on the street is just stupid and low class. When you talk about Howard Stern, you're talking about somebody who, no matter how low you set the level of taste, he can limbo right underneath it. And to think that once upon a time, Howard Stern was just a crass DJ who got himself fired off the Boston airwaves. He's probably probably had a miserable childhood. People kicked him. He was goofy looking in college. Nobody liked him. Someone gave him this radio job and now he gets a chance to vent his spleen across America. But after 10 years on the air in New York, Howard Stern is spreading his vulgar cheer over Washington DC, Cleveland, Los Angeles, Dallas, and of course, John DeBella's hometown. I would do anything. It makes no difference. Anything for a laugh. Howard Stern has turned radio into his personal psychosis session. There is no reason why man should have hemorrhoids. He has the help of his two staff comedians. My name is Jackie the Joke Man Martling and I am an alcoholic. His chipmunk producer. His celebrity interviewer who pretends to stutter. And a woman named Robin Quivers whose presence is supposed to make it all acceptable. There's a soft-heartedness under all of that belligerence. Are you ever afraid of Howard? No, never. Should I be? Sometimes, depending. <laughs> but what happened in Philadelphia is unacceptable in any company. After John DeBella lost his ratings, after he and his wife got a divorce, Howard Stern did the cruelest, most heartless thing any radio host could imagine. He put John DeBella's wife on display on his show. She went on the Howard Stern show to pay back John for some years of their love, loveless marriage. And I think this was the ultimate payback of a woman scorned. Howard Stern went so far as to auction off Annette DeBella to the highest bidder. She came on the show and they played this dial-a-date game that Stern plays. He had three callers call up trying to get a date with Mrs. DeBella. Uh, and this went on for two hours on the air. The unanticipated uh, result may be that it's creating sympathy for John DeBella. Now, station WMMR has changed its format. John DeBella is no longer called the zookeeper. Our Ames Yates paid a visit to Mrs. DeBella to find out how she could have helped cause this, how she could have joined up with Howard Stern and hammered that final nail of humiliation. Isn't that here? And what of this man who takes victory so gracelessly, who allegedly lives a monastic home life of strange health foods and meditation? Mr. Stern! Howard! Our Audrey Lavin Howard! went to New York City to ask Howard Stern how he could be so heartless and mean. The big bully ran away, simply slithering into his studio. But as Howard Stern expands his theater of cruelty, he gathers listeners across the nation. The fact that he has spread 
all the way to L.A., to me, is, is the sign that the revolution is here. But a true Blue Stern fan looks something like this. Are you listening today? Why not? It's a good show. The zookeeper's girlfriend is on, his wife. A perfect example of what happens after listening to too much Howard Stern. That's Melrose Larry Green. He believes I should be president. And you know what? He might be right. Howard Stern has disgraced the covers of national magazines. He's made his profane appearance at the MTV Awards, and he says he will soon make a movie. A film with a title so vulgar we can't repeat it. I saw Mick Jagger walking around, and you know what I noticed? That he has more wrinkles in his face than in my So I'm thinking I want to talk to Mick before it passes out. Laugh at his jokes at the expense of others. But remember, there is one man who will never be the same again. A man who brought people joy with the simple word, Yazoo. I, I think we all need a break. Now, a special satellite report on the latest sex secrets from Buckingham Palace. Plus, Linda Evans' guru in a nasty, nasty divorce battle. <laughs>